video is going to be one of my favorite videos to film. It is going to be um, ranking all of my eyeshadow palettes that I got in the second half of the year of 2020. I kind of went super apeshit with <laughs> palettes this year, you guys. I picked up so many eyeshadow palettes this year. I basically, you know, allowed myself to try a bunch of different brands of eyeshadows this year that I've never tried before. So it is that time where I'm able to share with you guys my thoughts and rank all of the palettes that I've tried in the second half of the year. I've used these palettes a few times to let you guys know how I feel about them. I've tested out all the shades. So let's get to it. So I pretty much tested out, I believe, 11 eyeshadow palettes in the second half of the year. No, 10. 10, okay, not too bad, <laughs> not too bad. I was like, 11? I was like, damn, that's a lot, Caitlin. So let's start out with number 10. Now, the reason why I'm ranking this one the lowest is not because I don't love the person that created this. It's not that I don't love the brand. I just wasn't really feeling the shades, you guys. I don't know why I picked this up, honestly. I kind of picked it up as like an impulse buy. I really did want to try one of Ofra's eyeshadow palettes, but honestly, it, this one just fell short for me. I probably should have waited to try um, or just like picked up a different neutral palette from them instead of this one, but this one I was just not vibing with. So number 10, unfortunately, is the Ofra Signature Palette Leora um, Loves Makeup Collaboration Palette. I just did not vibe with this palette, you guys. I tried to like it, but I honestly don't really like the formula too much. So this is what it looks like. And then the inside palette has the five pans. Usually this is how um, Ofra lays out their palettes. And I don't have any problem with these five pan palettes, but honestly, like, when I was looking at this, like, I mean, I was super excited for her. Honestly, I love her. It doesn't change the way I feel about her. I absolutely love Leora Loves Makeup. She's amazing. And I was so happy and excited for her when she got a collab with Ofra. I think it was amazing. And she, like, kept on asking a lot of people, like, if you guys could guess what who she was collaborating with. And pretty much everybody guessed that it was going to be Ofra. So she came out with this 5 pan palette. It is a curated palette. It's not a custom palette. These are all shades that you can get from Ofra. Um, so it does come with these three mattes and these two shimmers. Now, usually most of the use I was going to get out of this palette is these two neutral shades and this shade Blissful. And honestly, I think that Blissful is the best shade in this palette, but this is one of their highlights. It is stunning on the lid as well. But all the other shades, I feel like fade on me really quickly. They don't really, they're not super pigmented, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. I love a buildable eyeshadow, but I just noticed it kind of fades throughout the day. And then this shade, um, which is called Chill Pill, it transfers so much off of the lid. And I kind of feel like it's, um, I mean, it's not completely worn away when the day is over, but like on the lid, it just like does not last. So I was really upset that I didn't fall in love with this palette, but unfortunately, I'm not going to not be honest and say like, oh my god, I love this palette because unfortunately, I didn't fall in love with it. So I'm sorry if you guys did pick up this palette and you love it. We all are allowed to have our different opinions. This doesn't change my opinion of, of Leora. I freaking love her. I just couldn't vibe with this one. So I'm sorry, but yeah. And I'm not really going to swatch too many of these palettes pretty much at all. I might just swatch like my favorite ones, but I'm not going to like swatch a million eyeshadow palettes because we'll be here forever. So yeah, that is unfortunately number 10. And then what's funny is that another my other like palette that I didn't really vibe with too much is from someone I love as well, but the two palettes that fell short for me are both collab palettes. And this, the number nine palette is the Estate Cosmetics and Bailey Sarian Venice Fling Palette. Now, I actually really do like this palette. But when it comes to all the other palettes that I did try this year, I didn't really love this formula as much as the other brands that I tried. So this is... Number nine for me, I love Bailey so much. She is one of my favorite influencers, if not my favorite big influencer. She's just one of those influencers that you just feel like could be like your friend that you could get drunk with at night. Like I feel like she would make you laugh and 
She just, like, looks like someone you could talk to all the time. She's just such a honest influencer, and I love her. And if you guys haven't watched her, like, what are you waiting for? She's amazing. Like, I love her Murdy, murder, Murdy, her murder mystery so this makeup. This palette was a collab palette with, et, with, this palette was a collab palette with Estate, but it was also a collaboration with Ipsy because this was going to be going in the Ipsy glam bag for that month that it was created for. Um, so this was created for the month of August. So it was an Ipsy exclusive bat, um, Ipsy exclusive palette, but you could also get it on a state's website. So I did order it from a state's website because I'm not subscribed to Ipsy. I don't need any subscription boxes. I have way too much makeup to begin with. So I don't really, um, subscribe to the subscription boxes. So anyway, this palette comes with four mattes and five shimmers. Now, for this palette, I think the shimmers are beautiful. The mattes are really pretty as well. I just feel like there wasn't enough like darker shades in here for me to really like smoke out the outer corners because I feel like this shade Toasty and Venice Fling is super crumbly when you try to use it as like a outer corner shade and Toasty is just not dark enough for me to put on my outer corners. Like usually 99% of the time when I'm using a outer corner shade, it has to be like a dark, dark brown like this kind of color but in a matte form and sometimes you know I can use shimmers and um use them as a matte like sometimes there you could do that with certain shimmers but this one it just crumbles when you try to blend it out so there are some great shades in here but there's also some shades that aren't that great but I feel like with this palette with the mattes if you like I feel like they only look better when you're like finished with your look and I feel like that's how Bailey is with makeup so I feel like that's why she kind of created this palette that way and also I understand that they're not super pigmented because a lot of like um like beginner friendly palettes like they don't have to be too pigmented because you kind of want to like build them up because sometimes like with super pigmented shadows it's really hard to blend them out and get them um to be you know like more everyday wear because that's probably because she was saying that that's the audience she was trying to target with someone who gets an ipsy glam bag because she was like I didn't want to make it like too colorful because you know ipsy kind of probably has a more neutral audience so that's why she kind of like but I love the color story I, I love the warm tones in here you guys know I love warm tones it's just like formula wise this kind of was not as good as you know the other formulas that I tried this year that's basically the only reason why it's ranked lower I still love Bailey I think it was a good palette it's not my favorite palette though um I love Ocean Avenue and Soul and the mattes are good but other and these two shimmers are good as well but I think that Soul and Ocean Avenue are gorgeous on the lid these two aren't as shimmery Venice Fling is nice too and then the mattes are pretty nice to blend out but other than that it wasn't my favorite palette, but I still love Bailey and I will still support her because I love her so much. But um, I'm kind of ranking this as far as the estate formula goes. It's not my favorite. So that one was number nine. Okay, let me just look at my list again. Um, okay, so number eight for me was another new brand to me. Again, I've been trying new brands like crazy this year. And this brand has been on my list to try for a long time, so I finally just decided to try it. So number eight is the Winky Lux Coffee Palette, and this is the Coffee Kitten Palette. Now, it was originally called the Coffee Palette, but now it's called the Coffee Kitten Palette because they did update the packaging, and it's so freaking cute. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with the formula of this palette. I actually freaking love the formula. It's a really great neutral palette and I highly recommend their their formula but again as compared to excuse me the other formulas I tried this year this one is just not as like blingy and like what I'm used to for shadows but it's still a great formula it's kind of it kind of reminds me of Makeup Geeks formula I feel like Winky Lux is very similar to like a Winky Lux formula or like Urban Decay um, I think the shimmers are beautiful. The mattes blend out beautifully. I have absolutely nothing negative to say about this palette. All the shades are great. I love this as an everyday palette. Um, I just think that there were other neutral shadows that I loved or other neutral palettes that I loved a little bit more than this one, but I do love this palette. I think it's a great palette. Um, 
any of these shimmers on the lid are beautiful. These are definitely my favorites. And then the brown uh, shimmers are also beautiful as well. And all of the mattes work beautifully with the shimmers in the in the palette. I think that this is a great neutral everyday palette. I have absolutely nothing negative to say about the formula. The formula is beautiful. It's super soft and buttery. And the shimmers just glide on the lid. So I actually really did love this palette. But there are definitely palettes that I loved more this year. But this palette was great. So I highly recommend Winky Lux. So that is number eight. And then number seven, I was going to rank this higher. And I, again, absolutely love this formula. The only reason why I'm ranking this a little bit lower is because this has pressed glitters in it. Mostly all the other palettes that I ranked higher don't have pressed glitters in them. I'm not... Um, against pressed glitters at all but I just didn't love the pressed glitters in this it's still a great palette I loved this palette um but as far as the other palettes that I ranked higher I loved them a little bit more than this one so again I'm only ranking these palettes formula wise as compared to but also I feel like I can you know try and I can do a bunch of looks with this palette as well, so that's why I really love this one. So number seven is the Pinky Rose Cosmetics Center Stage Palette. This is pretty much one of the newest palettes to my collection, but I did try out all of the shades, and I really, really love it. It's beautiful. I feel like this color story just literally screams fall, and it especially screams Thanksgiving to me. I feel like this is such a Thanksgiving palette. I'm definitely going to use it on Thanksgiving because I feel like it, it's just great. The mattes are gorgeous in this palette. They blend out beautifully, super pigmented, super soft. I love them. And the shimmers in this palette are also gorgeous. But again, there was just some shimmers in other palettes that just wowed me way more. But this is still a gorgeous palette. Um, Floodlight and Glam are like my two favorites because you guys know I love gold kind of shimmer pal uh, shimmer shades. Um, the pressed glitters are good. They're not like amazing to me. Um, Infamy, I definitely love more than Scandal. I've only used Scandal once, but most of the other shimmers I've used um, at least twice. And I've used all the mattes a couple of times and the mattes are stunning. Like they're super smooth. I'll swatch some of them for you guys. We'll just swatch some of my favorite shades like they're they're beautiful like seriously stunning like these are basically the shades i'm going to use for thanksgiving but they just they swatch gorgeously like i have no problem with the formula um but the shade scandal which is like a purpley kind of glitter it was a little bit harder to work with than um the shade um, infamy because I felt like it wasn't as opaque or easy to build up on the lid by itself as compared to infamy um, but other than that all the shades performed beautifully like I love every single shade in this palette except for probably this one but once I layered this on top of the purple it looked really pretty so honestly have nothing bad to say about it there's not one dud shade in this palette it's gorgeous I freaking love it Okay, so then number six, of course, we're going to throw in some ColourPop in here because I tried to stay strong and not really get too many ColourPop palettes at all this year, but I kind of caved um, the second half of the year because usually ColourPop comes out with their um, Disney collabs around October and November, and I ended up picking up both of them. So I have tried out all the shades in both of the palettes, so I really wanted to share my thoughts on both of these palettes. So number six is the ColourPop Star Wars Mandalorian The Child palette. So this one kind of shot up my list. Um, I really haven't gotten too many nine pan palettes this year, but look at this packaging. How freaking adorable is this? Like I really tried to say no to this, but then I was like, I kind of need this packaging in my life because it's so freaking adorable. And I have the other two nine pan Disney palettes as well, which are the Frozen palettes. And I love both of those palettes, so I was kind of really intrigued to try this one. This is the only other nine pan palette that I've picked up from ColourPop this year besides the Going Coconuts palette. And it was only the third ColourPop palette that I picked up this whole year. So I'm kind of staying strong, not picking up too many ColourPop palettes this year, so I'm pretty proud of myself. But I just thought this color story was really beautiful. I thought that the shades were neutral enough for me, but also 
pretty interesting with like the olive tones in here that I could get use out of this still and green is a pretty um like neutral color to me I feel like especially like these kind of greens um for me I wear more like pink sh pink tones or green tones or like goldish like reddish tones or like orangey tones in like the fall time so those are usually like more like everyday colors to me not like blue and and like pretty much blue is like the only shade that I won't really wear on like a regular basis like I feel like any colorful shadows like red pink green purple you can make them wearable um so I feel like that this is a pretty wearable green palette and these shades are beautiful the shimmers are stunning the only reason why I ranked this one a little bit lower than the Hocus Pocus one is because the shimmers are very transfer prone especially the shade right hand Mando and the force these two shades I didn't find that as much because this one's more of a super shock shadow so the super shock shadows don't really transfer as much and then this one is kind of more of like a regular shimmer from them but these shimmers are gorgeous you guys um so I definitely loved this palette I've been using it like crazy the past week just so I could you know really review it for you guys and it's beautiful I love it I mean I wasn't really expecting anything else from ColourPop because they're always stunning so those are some of the metallics and I feel like that these metallics are just as good as the going coconuts ones and that's what I kind of felt that like the Hocus Pocus palette needed a little bit more for me um but I did rank that one higher and we'll talk about it in a minute let's just talk about this one still but it's adorable and the mattes in here are beautiful I don't have any trouble with any of the mattes I mean I love ColourPop's matte formula but these mattes are really great so yeah I I love it I can't I don't really have anything negative to say about this one I think they did a great job with the color story but I think that they always do a great job with the color stories for the Disney palettes because Disney pretty much picks out the colors. They name the shades, I'm pretty sure. ColourPop just makes the formula, but Disney pretty much controls everything else that goes into the Disney palette. So they always do such a great job with the Disney color stories though. So that one is number six. And if you guys have been watching the show, let me know. I love Baby Yoda. Of course, he's my favorite. So in the show, I mean, everybody loves Baby Yoda pretty much. Um, okay, and then speaking of the Hocus Pocus palette, um, it is number five on my list. So this is the ColourPop Hocus Pocus Gather Around Sisters um, eyeshadow palette. Originally, I was not going to get this palette. The same thing with the Mandalorian palette. But I don't know. The color story was just really speaking to me. I just thought the packaging was beautiful. And I was like, I just really want this. I mean, maybe I just bought into the hype. I kind of felt like I needed this palette because it was such a hyped up palette. And... It wasn't going to be restocked, so I was kind of happy that I got my hands on it. I was a little bit upset for other people that really wanted it, that wanted them to restock this palette. Honestly, it's kind of shitty that they didn't restock this palette, and I'm really sorry if you didn't get your hands on it. Um, my friend Brittany didn't get it either, and she was dying to get it, and I felt really bad that she didn't get it. And for somehow, I got it. I don't know how I did, because, like I said, I, I usually luck out with this stuff. I don't know how, but, like, um, I was, like, looking at other things on the website before I actually went to check out and get this. And I got everything that I put in my cart. And I was like, okay. Um, so, yeah, I love the color story. I think that they did a great job with putting a mix of neutrals in here and also putting these, like, pops of color in here, but kind of, like, still keeping them more muted and like I think that this is such a beautiful fall palette and I used it so much um during the month of October that's pretty much going to be when I use this palette is in October I haven't used it since then I haven't used haven't used it since Halloween but I think the formula is great the reason why I ranked this one higher than the Mandalorian palette even though I might like those metallics even more is because I feel like you can do a lot of looks with this palette so yeah, basically, I, like I've said in pretty much every video that I talk about this, I love that they put these coinciding mattes to match the shimmers. I think that that was a great way for someone who might be afraid of color to create a look. And then you can always throw these two shades in the crease and then pop this on like the defining area or the outer corners and on the lower lash line and then pop one of these on the lid. And I think that they did a great job with 
curating this palette. So again, because it's a Disney palette, I always think they do a great job with the color scheme of this palette. But I also love the pressed glitter in here. I feel like the pressed glitter in here is like a different formula than the other ones. It's almost like a metallic glitter. It just feels like a normal eyeshadow and I really love it. Like it's not as PC as their usual glitters are and it's gorgeous. I think that this is like my favorite shade in the palette. It's gorgeous. I mean, I literally just said gorgeous and I'll swatch a couple of the other metallics for you guys because you guys know I love shimmers. So I'm going to swatch a bunch of the shimmers for you guys. But I always swatch these too. So this one is Tiz Firm. And this one is Thackeray Banks. I think they did a great job in naming the shades as well. But as you guys can see, these shades are not as met metallic as like the Mandalorian ones. I do think that they're a little bit more subtle. Um, so I was kind of going back and forth on whether or not the Mandalorian palette was higher or this one. Because again, the metallics in here are actually not as metallic as the Going Coconuts palette and the Mandalorian palette, which is interesting to me. But I kind of feel like usually, um, even the Midnight Masquerade and the It's a Princess Thing palette, I think that the metallics are more metallic than these are. I think that these ones are a little bit more subtle, but it's still a gorgeous palette, so let's stop rambling about it. So, um, if you guys got your hands on it, it's a great palette. So, that one was number five for me. And now, number four, I'm just going to I'll wipe off some swatches real okay, quick. so then number four really like crept up my list but as soon as I tried this palette along with the number three palette in my ranking I fell in love with both of these these are have become some of my favorite neutral palettes so number four is the Cindy Grace Summer Days palette now hopefully I can hold this one up because some of the shades in here are a little bit fragile so it's kind of getting a bit crumbly but I'm just going to hold it up like this so this was my first ever Cindy Grace palette and okay sorry my boyfriend was texting me so anyway yeah I fell in love with this palette you guys this was my first Cindy Grace palette my first time trying the formula and I heard so many good things about Cindy Grace and a lot of people were trying to get me to try the brand but I was kind of waiting to see if they were going to come out with a palette because I'm not like too much of a singles person um anymore and since I had already um, made, cause like I don't try to overwhelm myself with getting single shadows cause I really don't use single shadows half as much as I use palettes. Like I pretty much use palettes on an everyday basis. It's a pretty much a rarity for me to get use out of my single shadows anymore unless it's like my ColourPop shadows that I use every single day, like my everyday palette. But my brand to try for, um, single shadows this year was Lele Posh and I absolutely fell in love with them but I really wanted to give Cindy Grace a chance a lot of people were telling me how good the formula was especially a little mauve so thank you so much for telling me her name is Julia and love her and she really just raves about Cindy Grace all the time so I finally tried them and I'm so glad that she pushed me to try it because I freaking fell in love with this palette their shimmers are stunning and I just think that this is such a gorgeous fall palette even though it's supposed to be a summer palette i really feel like this is a fall palette to me um so the shimmers are absolutely stunning this one is a bit crumbly though because it's so pigmented and it's so metallic but their shimmers are absolutely gorgeous on the lid and they are so easy to use they're not really too transfer um prone they're actually really really beautiful and their mattes are so freaking buttery they're just such an easy formula to use. Like, I, I love this for every day. You don't really have to think about your look. You don't really have to spend too much time blending it out. So um, that's why I just really fell in love with this palette. So this one is S'mores. This one is Camping. Look at that shade. That is so beautiful. This one is Beach Days. And this one is Break of Day. So just to give you some swatches. But literally stunning. Absolutely love this palette. So... Yeah, I really have been enjoying it so much. I can't wait to get more use out of it soon because, again, I'm just trying to use, like, other palettes this um, week because I've just been, you know, using the Mandalorian palette a bunch. So, yeah, love this palette. Okay, so then number three is actually the palette I am wearing on my eyes today. 
And this one just shot up my list. This is basically my favorite neutral palette that I tried this year. And that's a big sentiment for me because you guys know how much I love my neutrals. Um, if I could put this in the actual sleeve. Oh my gosh. Um, but I'm actually wearing this on my eyes today too because I wanted to go back and use it again. But I fell in love with this palette, you guys. So number three is the BH Sweet Shop Sugar Cone Palette as I almost drop it out of the sleeve again. Oh my God. I love this palette. I didn't think I was going to love this palette so much, but I was hearing so many good things about these ice cream palettes that I was like, I need to try one for myself. And I fell in love with it. So this is by BH Cosmetics. Again, Pretty much all of these brands that I am talking to you guys about, I have never tried any of their eyeshadows before. Um, I haven't really tried too much of anything from BH Cosmetics, and then Cindy Grace was in the new brand to me. Um, I had tried Ofra's like cheek products, but I've never tried their eyeshadows. Like I really tried to branch out this year, but oh my god, this palette is gorgeous! Holy crapiolis! Like these metallics are delicious they are so beautiful on the lid so I am wearing it on my eyes today so and these mattes just blend out gorgeously and they are so buttery smooth and easy to work with I love this palette I think that they blew it out of the park with this formula they are gorgeous so um today I'm using sugar rush as my transition shade and then I put delicious in my crease then I darken up the crease more with toasted and then I put homemade on the outer corners. I mean, yes, I use the same four mattes every single time, but they're so beautiful. Like, I know, like, there's not too much versatility out of it, but that's what makes it an everyday palette, you know? But these metallics just make the mattes just, like, you know, the mattes are gorgeous, but the metallics really make this palette. Oh my god, they are so stunning. Um, So then I put dipped all over my lid, and then I put cookie dough on my inner corners. They're almost, like... They're super glittery metallics. They are so gorgeous. Oh my god. And they're so buttery smooth. Like, look at that. They're, like, almost, like, pretty much as good as Cindy Grace. I mean, I love the Cindy Grace ones, too, but these are stunning. Like, these don't even do it justice. Like, you have to apply them to your lid to see, like, how gorgeous they are. But they are beautiful. And then I'll just swatch a couple of the matte shades. <laughs> These mattes, though, oh my god, they swatch beautifully. They're so smooth. Look at that. So this one is um, delicious, and this one is toasted. Like, oh my god, so beautiful. I absolutely love this palette. I knew as soon as I tried it, I'm like, oh my god. This is beautiful. So, yeah, it kind of blew me away on how much I loved it. I was like, oh, it's going to be good. But I didn't think I was going to love it as much as I do. It's stunning. I highly recommend trying at least one of these palettes if you've never tried BH before. They're not too expensive. They're like $15 to $20. And they you get, and you get a ton of product in here. So I think it's definitely worth the money. But I just fell in love with this. And they have like six color options. Like, but if you're a neutral girl like me and you don't want too much color, this is a great palette. So, yeah, I freaking love it. So, it is beautimous. Okay, so before I get into the top two palettes, I just want to give you guys a second to see if you guys can guess what my top two palettes are. I think everyone could pretty much know what number one is. But number two, I don't know if you guys forgot about because I only really used it during, like, the summertime. So, I'll give you guys a second. I'll take it out of the packaging. But number two is another new brand to me. And so many people were pushing me to try this brand. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And I kept on looking at them. And, you know, the packaging is just so adorable. And I know some people are like, oh, it's so gimmicky and blah, blah, blah. But number two is the Glam Light Pizza Meat Lovers Palette. Oh, my God, you guys. Their formula is gorgeous. Like, every single shade in here is freaking stunning. As I knock my glass <laughs> again, can I not do that? But oh my god, it's not just because it's a pizza palette. These are gorgeous. Like, beautiful. Like, Cindy Grace and BH, again, the metallics are stunning. The metallics are beautiful in this palette. 
The mattes in here too though are so gorgeous. Like, oh my god, I fell in love with their formula. They are hyped up for a reason. Their formula is stunning. So let me just swatch some of the shades for you guys. Oh, this bacon shade is beautiful. But, like, honestly, it doesn't do it justice really, like, swatching it. Like, you have to put it on your eyes. Let me just move some stuff. And let me just swatch a little bit more of that chicken shade. Chicken's actually, like, my favorite shade in the palette, you guys know. Um, but, oh, that sounds like a good choice. My, my boyfriend's telling me what he wants to eat. Um, but for... Oh my god, I lost my train of thought. These aren't really doing it justice. Like, you kind of have to put them on your lid to see how beautiful their formula is because just swatching them doesn't really give you, like, the feel of how beautiful they are because once you put them on your lid, they're, like, stunning. Um, and then the um, matte shades are so good. Like, their mattes are beautiful. Like, they blend out so amazing. So I just want to swatch a couple of those, too. Again, it's not really going to do it any justice, but they are buttery smooth. I know, again, some people are like, it's gimmicky, the packaging's too big. I understand that, but that's why I got, like, the Pizza Slice palette. So, these are some of the mattes. Again, doesn't really do it justice. It's not really going to show you guys how beautiful these are, but on the, in the crease, they blend out so beautiful. So, I am so happy that I finally decided to try glam light because I was not disappointed. The hype is real. Um, and I was like, you know, eyeing the donut palette as well, but I knew that this palette was a palette that I was going to use a lot. I thought that these palette, th that these palette, that these shades were so gorgeous for the summertime. I got a ton of use out of it during the summertime and I don't regret buying it at all. And the, the layout is just so adorable. Like, duh. But <laughs> seriously amazing loved the formula and i just think the packaging is so adorable and i love that it's a little pizza slice i mean i just needed a pizza palette in my life like i love pizza and when i showed my boyfriend he was like oh my god that's so cute so <laughs> he wasn't that happy but he was like oh my god that is really cute so i needed it and i love it and then of course number one give you a second, but I think everybody knows what my favorite brand of eyeshadow is, and they just knocked my, my socks off again. This is pretty much going to be my number one palette anyway, probably for the whole year, but of course I have to make it number one in this video too because it's pretty much unbeatable. So number one is drumroll. <laughs> give me a little extra spicy. Doing the Gimme Glow Cosmetics Extra Spicy Palette. You guys, I literally never stop nagging people about Give Me Glow because even though I only have two palettes from them, I mean, I'm good with the two palettes. Also, they are actually just announced on their Instagram that they are discontinuing this palette. So if you guys were wanting to get it, I suggest you get it now because it's not going to be around for much longer because, oh my god, you guys... It is incredible. Like, oh my god. Like, I'm not being biased. I just think that their formula is ridiculous. Like, literally my favorite eyeshadow formula. Oh my god. I mean, I love me some ColourPop. ColourPop is definitely, like, tied. But Gimme Glow's metallics, there is nothing like their metallics. And their mattes are beautiful, too. Um, I think that these mattes are even better than the Vintage Rose ones. And these metallics, holy crap, you always, like... When this palette came out, I was like, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. But then I was like, I really need a warm tone palette from them. And I was just really dying to try another palette from them. I'm like, I really can't not because I fell in love with the Vinci Rose palette that I got this one. And I was like, oh my God, this palette is amazing. So these metallics, you guys, you like barely have to swatch. Like this, I'm barely touching the pan. I'm literally just going like this a little bit. Like, holy crap, so beautiful. Oh my god, look at that, look at that. So this one is on fire, this one is ghost pepper, and this one is 24 karat wings. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. I really want to throw this on my eyes again at some point, so now I can probably use it like maybe next week or something. 
but it's gorgeous. I freaking love it. I just, I love Gimme Glow. I think that their products are amazing. I know they were in a little bit of controversy recently. I even had like a little thing with the owner, but um, I'm glad she's learning from her mistakes and I will still support her brand. I'm not just going to write her off. And then I'm just going to swatch a couple of the mattes, but they are so beautiful. Look at that. They're not like the most buttery smooth when you put it in the pan, but they are freaking pigmented and they blend out so beautiful. So look at that. Oh my God. Look at that. So this one is spicy peach martini. This one is can we get more salsa and this one is flaming hot. I mean, the swatches pretty much speak for themselves. Do you see how much better those swatch than like every other shadow that I swatched? I mean, not that again, that those shadows aren't amazing, but these swatch amazing. And then on your lid it, or on your eyes is literally this color. Like that's why they're so amazing. But I just fell in love with the warm tones in this palette. Everybody was like, oh my God, these are your colors, Caitlin. Like I got so many compliments on the looks that I did with this palette and I love you guys thank you so much but holy crap like if you like can at least try one palette from Gimme Glow I would suggest the Vintage Rose palette because that's their most popular palette like everybody wants it but or maybe try some single shadows but I just feel like people need to try this brand because they are freaking amazing they just blew me away and this palette is just no exception I absolutely freaking loved it it was like my favorite summer palette oh my god I love it so much so yeah that is it you guys please let me know if you guys have tried any of these palettes yourself like did you really pick up too many palettes this year I understand if people didn't I mean like who makeup was pretty much a last priority for a lot of people but you know I was picking up a lot of makeup because of the unemployment payments so I wanted to take advantage of that, but I have glitter literally all over myself. That means I need to go. So I love you guys. Please like and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please follow me on my Instagram at CBW819 so we can talk and chat. I love you guys. Bye.